had it has passed all the stages and we are at the final stage for chairman of the governor's forum, the chairman of the police, or security committee, the governor of the state, and some governors who accompanied him. They had discussions with me on the need and possibility of collaborating with Nigeria police. In most states, they have vigilantes and some other security outfits. So for me, I felt the police must have a very clear uh, responsibility of ensuring the coordination of the activities of such groups in the states. But they are also, in addition, are asking for kind of financial uh, support for the various uh, security outfits in the in particular. Not Shenya uh, Kamasa or what is it? So I felt this is something that we need to discuss. But I also believe that um, going forward from today, we must have clearly defined milestones and timelines for the implementation of the community policy. Very specific things. <coughs> Something that we can go back to in three months, in six months, and say, where are we exactly? You might have been implementing the community policy, and this meeting is an opportunity for you to give us an update of where you have where which states you have implemented the community policy and how it happened and how successful it is. And those things that you have not will need a program, a line of activities. Steps one, two, three, ten. You will do you start the implementation so social dates. In fact, we should have even our committees participating when it comes to inauguration or whatever it is, so that we give community policy a life of its own. People should recognize it and partner with it. So we want to see milestones and timelines, measurable targets on how we are going to implement that. When the Senate passed the resolutions, on security situations. We were mandated, I was specifically mandated to meet with Mr. President to discuss the issues. And the, the meeting with Mr. President about a week and a half or two, this issue of community policy was one issue arranged with him. And that also led us to discuss the need to recruit more policemen or women. Because the number you know better than we do is simply inadequate. And if you have to recruit, then you have to train. We have to support our training institutions. We believe in the National Assembly that the security situation in the country requires that we make it number one priority for government. Because in the Constitution, it is security and welfare. Welfare comes second. Because somebody has to live or to be alive, 
or to be safe before you start thinking of going to farm or whatever it is, business that he or she wants to do. So no amount of public or government investment would be too much. I know we have positive of funds, but we have to be ingenious, we have to find a way of strengthening our security agencies and the police. It's so important in this country. So we talked about the recruitment. How many are we supposed to have per year? And of course, the training institutions. And even your barracks. Because I report, Mr. President, was saying if you see the barracks where these people will leave their families and go protect us, you know that, that something is wrong. Because if you leave your family in a good environment, you go to wherever you are going in a better frame of mind, committed. But when someone lives in a small, imagine me thinking somebody will catch a disease in this small. So we need to look at that. And finally, what do you think we should do with mobile police? When the Shanghai administration decided to come up with the idea of mobile police, I'm sure the administration did, was not thinking of the mobile police doing the regular the, 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 the activities of the regular police. When we have to deploy soldiers everywhere, most of the time, soldiers are doing police work. We can't be happy with this because it's not, it's not sustainable. How can we make the mobile police to be an active agent of our formula for fighting the insecurity in the government? Because by training, probably they can be between the regular police and the, the, the army or the military. Better than the regular police and less trained and equipped than the military. So they can we now, given our current situation, do something to build on the initial mandate of the founding fathers of mobile police? I'm sure when we were going to blow session because of the, the, our brothers and sisters and uh, the media will have to leave us for the blow session so that we are able to discuss <laughs> sensitive matters. We will have some other issues coming up as a result of the discussion. But I want to assure you that in the National Assembly, all we care for today is one, the security of lives and all. Because this is redefining our entire life. Even COVID-19 pandemic that people initially do not like to mention the name because it's like just beside you or around the corner. People now see it as secondary in terms of the threat to life that the Gandhi tree in the northwest, uh, the Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast, and so many, so many other security uh, breaches across the country. So this is our number one priority. I believe that it's something that what we put heads together, we can find a solution. Even if we come to block everything, we should be able to find a way out to improve on the security situation of our country. Thank you very much. So at this uh, at this point, I will uh, kindly appeal to our people, to the press. I, I can see only one camera. Let's hear. Thank you very much. Who is the other one? The policeman. No, 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 not only at the, all, all, all the cameras. I don't know. I want to thank you for, for covering us. First, to discuss issue of the implementation of community policing strategy and also the security in the country. And, uh,
happily enough the Senate President joined the meeting and have briefed them on the implementation of community policing strategy, what we have done so far in all the states of the Federation, all the committees for the implementation of the community policing strategy have been inaugurated in almost all the states of the Federation, where the level of um, selecting the community policing officers now, we hope by August, September, we will complete the process. Uh, looking at the challenge of food security across the nation, and uh, looking at uh, the lawmakers uh, plenary that have to do with the security, there's this passion for police having the capacity to confront banditry and all forms of terrorism. Uh, in your own sense of judgment, can you say you are getting adequate support from the National Assembly so far? Well, um, I think uh, this uh, National Assembly, at this time around, they are very, very serious and passionate about security in this country. If there is any security challenge, they quickly refer back to us or call us to give them briefing so that they will be aware of what is happening. All of them are aware of the effort that security uh, agencies or agents have been doing in, in tackling um, insecurity in this country. What we require from them is support and then um, uh, appropriation, enhanced appropriation. And they have been cooperating in, 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 in those areas. So they are better informed in terms of what the security agencies are doing in fighting crime and insecurity in this country. So uh, how is this community policing going to be any different? Is it going to... Uh, take care of the issue of banditry and the rest of them? Community policing will take care of almost everything. The, the, the criminals are coming from our communities, which means within the community, everybody, if you come from that community, will be able to identify that A, B, or C are engaged in acts that either will lead to commission of crime or they are committing the crime. So because you come from the community, you identify them, you'll be able to let the community policing committee in the ward or at the local government level to identify these people so as to take them out before they commit the crime. So it is going to be very, very effective in terms of grassroots policing. And this is what is required, grassroots policing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Yeah.